most of the negotiation was done all with uh, with House leadership. And there was a lot of things that were changed and altered, but the Stupak Amendment, which is basically the Hyde Amendment, the abortion amendment, was the only the only rule made in order, which through I mean, the legislation you you know ahead of time it's going to be offered, what's going to be allowed and what's not going to be allowed. You know? So it wasn't a, it wasn't an open process. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I, I have to take exception with one thing that you said, which is that the Stupak Amendment is basically the Hyde Amendment. It isn't, because the Hyde Amendment pertains to public funds, whereas the Stupak Amendment covers private funds that take part in the exchange. So that's a little disingenuous, I think. But also, um, considering that women are, are the most thought of the Democratic voting group, um, unless you look at racial considerations in the country, aren't you kind of kicking your base by voting for that amendment, which you did? My convictions and my faith and him <coughs> as a person <coughs> far exceeds anything I'll ever do as a member of Congress. Um, but you represent a lot of other things. I do. Uh, if that's your plan, you sir, you're in the wrong line of work. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you have to make those decisions. There wasn't a single person in this district that didn't know my stance on abortion from the very beginning how I voted. From the time that I elected to run for office, everyone knew my stance. And Anytime there are federal funds that are actually going, and there are subsidies within those uh, those areas, and along with the Congressional Budget Office, along with the Speaker's Office, all of them indicated that there are federal funds that actually go to, to uh, those independent those uh, insurance companies. So it's not along with, <coughs> along with private funds, but there are federal funds that are actually going to those to subsidize people's health insurance. So there, in effect basically says by the law that we have, the Hyde Amendment that's put in every single uh, appropriations, okay? Every year we go through the same exact process. When it goes and it's put into effect, you know, it's kind of funny that people now just want to talk about it. Uh, and it goes in every single year. And we've all voted on it or against it, however people perceive it. And some people, will vote, they'll vote for their appropriations, but they won't vote it as a standalone. And as we well know, we saw what happened, and it was overwhelming majority. An overwhelming majority of the House actually voted for the, the legislation. And you know, I mean, at some point in time, uh, you know, uh, when I'm out of office and I have to look at how I voted on, on on particular issues, and when it comes to the way I was raised and who I am as a person, that particular issue will always be the way I vote. People knew that before I was going into office. Up here, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You talk about senior citizens and the cost of health care. Prescription drug costs are, are, are phenomenal. They're going through the roof exponentially. Yep. Is there anything being done to curtail that? Well, a perfect example is why, you know, the um, the pharmaceutical industry was the industry that came up and said, oh, we'll, we'll volunteer $880 <laughs> billion. Hospitals said, we'll volunteer $151 billion in savings. That was just accepted and we moved on. I thought that, I think that there's a lot more to get out of some of these industries than we actually have saw. And it's kind of like uh, the rabbit in the bar briar patch. You know, go ahead and throw me in at this, I'll accept this, and that's kind of what happened. We didn't do all that we could to get everything we could out of the current system. We're basically adding people to a broken system. You know, we're rewarding people for, uh, on the provider side of just running test after test after test after test when we need to be looking at outcome, outcome, outcome. And that's how some other places, you know, fee-for-service is the perfect example for, of that. That uh, the more fee services that you provide, the more fees that you get. Therefore, the more money that you make. Uh, has Congress looked at, the, the follow-up, has Congress looked at why these pharmaceutical companies they ship their product to another country? <coughs> charge a lot cheaper rate than they do inside the Oh, sure. Now, remember, the pharmaceutical company actually was in favor of this. Pharma was actually in favor of this legislation. So don't forget that. <laughs> there's reasons why. Yes, sir. I was wondering if there's any steps toward I mean, uh, uh, research and other alternative energy resources. Yeah, actually, um, um, through a lot of things uh, that has been done, our energy bill that we passed recently, uh, more renewables, sustainables, um, a lot of money is being spent based upon the research. What we need to do is get to the second and third generation of uh, solar.
solar panels. You know, we're still in that first series or generations, and we need to get to the next generation of solar panels. A lot with the wind turbines is another example of a lot of funding that's going to go and research from our carbon footprint. That money will be able to go. Those people who use too much, it has a bigger carbon footprint, <coughs> will obviously go to be able to find this research to make us more independent from our, from in a lot of different, in a lot of ways, our enemies in the Middle East, make us more independent, secure our country, and to ensure that, that we're more long-term sustainable, have renewable energies, and that we don't, we have the diversity within our uh, utilities. Uh, you know, even the uh, utility companies are starting to come out with some ways of, uh, of lowering, the health, uh, lowering the cost of utilities based upon their incentives. You know, I mean, you know, we kind of did this, you know, and it's, this is the one of the things I stress on the healthcare side of it too. Utility companies can't arbitrarily increase your energy bill, right? But guess who can? The insurance companies can arbitrarily increase your rate. We all see how those premiums have continued to escalate year after year after year. On the utility side, we said, we're going to start rewarding the utility companies, which basically ultimately ends up being the shareholders. We're going to reward those companies who start incentivizing their customers to use less electricity. So we're going to reward you for using less electricity. So now, Progress Energy is a perfect example. They're spending a half a billion dollars over the next five years in this area and, and to be able to lower the cost basically through weatherization, new lights, weather stripping, caulking, insulation, new windows, they're going to be able to utilize that. Why can't we take that same approach, And which is I've continued to ask our leadership in house, let's take that same <coughs> approach that we took with the uh, utility companies. I mean, look at the antitrust agreements that the, uh, that, the, uh, that the insurance companies have in this state. How many insurance companies do we have provide health care in this state? Four. We actually really only have two that do, what, 85, 90 percent? You know, we fixed it so they have been, they're in the fix. They can do whatever they want to. So why don't we reward people? Let me, let me, here's my example of that. Anybody here uh, qualify for uh, cash for clunkers? Anybody do cash for clunkers? Not a single soul in here did cash for clunkers. <laughs> you did, all right. Your family did. Okay, so you rewarded what forty five hundred dollars to to turn in your car, right? I'm not singling no one out, okay, but probably they got a loan to get the vehicle, right? So people for forty five hundred dollars what went twenty to thirty thousand dollars deeper in debt. Now think about that. For forty five hundred dollars, you went deeper in debt, right? So which is more important, an automobile? or health insurance. Health insurance is more important, right? Right? For $4,500, they went deeper in debt. And sometimes for five to seven years, depending upon how they, they structured their loan. So why can't we take those same examples in the health insurance industry and reward people for successes? The Asheville Project in Asheville is ex the perfect example of what they've been able to do. The Asheville Project has been going on since 1997, and here's what they said. They took their employees and they said, we have a huge amount, our health insurance continues to increase. And we looked at the actuarial data and said that those with diabetes are costing us the most money. <coughs> That's costing us, as, a, as not as a company, but as a city, it's costing them the most money. So how can we lower those health care costs in the highest cost that's, that we're having to pay for? So what they did is they put together a disease management program that basically says this. If you will <coughs> participate in our disease management program, we will pay for all your meds, your strips, your co-pays, Anything related to you going to the doctor, we will pay for those. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to participate in our program that will 
You'll go to the doctor when the doctor's asked for you to come for a routine visit, get your routine checkups done. You'll meet with your pharmacist to make sure that you're taking your drugs correctly.